they hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Yo, if you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. No, you won't. I can't believe they were singing karaoke at the last WBC convention. I'm seeing videos of Sean Porter out there singing his ass off. I think I seen, was that, Hasim Rachman? Man, I'm going to the next WBC convention. They better not have an open mic, y'all. Anyways, what's up with it, fam? This is Hot Boxing Minute, your favorite pharmaceutical engineer turned boxing analyst. Back at you with that uncut realness. The word on the street right now, Javante Tank Davis and Jerron Boots Ennis both got fights coming up. The first things first, let's talk about Javante Tank Davis, one of the upcoming bright possible future faces of the sport. Him and Canelo Alvarez are the only ones really putting up even somewhat reasonable pay-per-view numbers, so I consider him as a possibility for being one of the future faces of the sport. Now, he put out a tweet. He put out a tweet. I don't know what day the tweet was, but the tweet said, let me see if I can pull this up. I did take a screenshot of it. Yes, he said, January, D.C., smoke emojis. Now, that would lead people of reasonable, you know, critical analysis skills to think that's one of his impromptu announcements. By the way, he deleted that tweet because that's what Javante Davis does. If you don't know and you follow Javante Davis on Twitter... If he has an interesting looking tweet, you better screen save it because he's going to delete it. That's him. He's an enigma. He's provocative. It makes people think. It gets them to talk. Anyways, in his uh, tweet, he said, January, smoke. The least people to believe there's a fight. Possibly January 7th. I don't know. In D.C. That's what all fingers are pointing to. Now, the question is, who's going to be Javante Tank Davis' opponent? And this is where I burst people's bubbles. If you don't already know... Isaac Cruz, Ryan Garcia, you could nix them off. They have a heavy Latino fan base that will travel to see them, but will not likely go all the way out to D.C. to see them. If you want that big gate money where you could make millions on a gate charging exorbitant prices against fighters like Isaac Cruz and Ryan Garcia, you got to fight them in the southwest region of the U.S., Closer to L.A. if you can. Obviously, I'm in San Diego. Shoot. But it would be in the Los Angeles area or Las Vegas. They'll travel that far to see him. So, we uh, are going to nix off Ryan Garcia and Isak Cruz. I highly doubt it's going to be Roly Romero because Roly Romero got murked. And when you get murked to that degree, there really is no point in running it back. That's just how it is, folks. So, we are going to hypothesize. Hypothesize. We're going to throw theories up in the air and see what happens and... You know, there, there's a long list of potential possibilities for Javante Davis. As I pull up just the lightweight rankings alone, and you know Javante Davis likes to fluctuate between different weight divisions. You know, Isak Cruz, Ryan Garcia, not going to happen. Lomachenko, he's slated to fight Devin Haney in an undisputed title fight. Cambosis Jr., that's a possibility, but not one I'm really thinking is going to happen. William Zepeda. He is down with Golden Boy. So nix that one off. Frank Martin. This is the list of Ring Magazine uh, top 10 lightweights I'm reading, by the way. Frank Martin. He's got a fight coming up with Michelle Rivera. And so, yeah, that's basically what's looking like. Now, my two best guesses based on the locale. First one, Gary Antoine Russell. Yes, Gary Antoine Russell, the former boxing national champion, the one that beat... Jerron Boots Ennis in the Olympic qualifiers, fresh off of that TKO stoppage win over Rancis Bartholome. Gary Antoine Russell competes in the 140-pound division. And here's the part that why I think he is one of the more likely candidates for this fight with Javante Davis. Because the fight is in Washington, D.C., and Gary Antoine Russell, along with his brother Gary Russell Jr., and the entire Russell clan is deep with roots in the DMV, the tri-state area right there, D.C., Virginia, Maryland. I believe he is originally from Maryland, Capitol Heights, Maryland, USA. So he's obviously got a big fan base out there. That would be a ticket seller if it was going to be Gary Antoine Russell. Gary Antoine Russell does strike me as somebody that wants to fight the best names that he can fight, and he is on PBC. 
That's one of the main things that had me thinking it would be Gary Antoine Russell. My other second possible opponent is going to be the recent WBA super lightweight champion, the 140-pound WBA champion Alberto Puello of Dominican Republic. The Dominicans been coming up hard. They had Edwin De Los Santos with the upset win over Rayo Valenzuela. And then you had um, the other Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, good Lord, Wepa, Carlos Adames, fresh off that knockout of Juan Macias Montiel. The Dominicans are coming up. Alberto Puello is a actual legit belt holder, and he is signed to PBC. And he stylistically is not the most fleet-footed of fighters. He likes to stand and bang. And if you stand and bang with a Javante Tank Davis, it is likely you are going to sleep unless you have some kind of phenomenal offensive gifts a la Ryan Garcia possibly, but this isn't about Ryan Garcia. So with that Javante Tank Davis announcement, my likely two candidates that I'm going to throw my name in the hat for this January, December, sorry, this January Washington, D.C. Gervonta Tank Davis fight is going to be Alberto Puello and Gary Antoine Russell Boxing Community. How do you feel about Gervonta Tank Davis doing the tweet and delete suggesting that he's going to fight in January in Washington, D.C.? Who do you think he's going to fight? If it's not Alberto Puello or Gary Antoine Russell, give me an idea. Shoot, let's chop it up over this. Leave it in the comments section. Hit that like button if you haven't already done so. The second announcement, Jerome Boots Ennis on this lovely day, he tweeted either today or yesterday, eight weeks out, eight weeks out. So he's got a fight eight weeks out, which roughly translates into <clears throat> January 7th, roughly that's eight weeks. So there is a possibility, and this would be so clutch and smart on the part of the PBC is to get Jerome Boots Ennis as the undercard on a Javante Tank Davis fight pay-per-view. Jerome Boots Ennis is not technically signed to the PBC, but he does have a platform deal with Showtime, who obviously with Stephen Espinosa and Al Heyman's relationship is very close to the PBC. That would be the smart move. That would be an enticing move that would not only boost Jerron Boots and his profile amongst casual boxing fans, it will also sweeten the pot for after Jerron's Showtime contract ends. Maybe PBC might possibly be able to convince Jerron Ennis to join their flock of fighters. They're stable. They currently have probably the most deep 147-pound welterweight division um, roster in the game. There's a couple of heads floating around on top rank. Matchroom has a handful, but they're having their issues. Y'all saw what just happened with Connor Ben, so we're not going to get into that. But as far as Jerron Boots Ennis and his possible opponents, I've narrowed it down to a couple of my picks. Before we begin, let's look at these rankings, shall we? As far as the 147-pound division and where they stand. That way you get a good look of what my logic is and why I think these are going to be his possible opponents. I'm only looking at the ring. Now, for most of these sanctioning bodies, Jerron Boots Ennis is ranked within the top three. In some of them, he's the number two guy behind Virgil Ortiz Jr. He might be the number one in other ones. Um, he is the number one in the IBF. I don't see him fighting Virgil Ortiz Jr. because Virgil Ortiz Jr. is a golden boy fighter. They've got that deal with Matchroom and DAZN. So it would, unless there's extraordinary amounts of money, that fight's not going to go down. In the ring rankings, there's Spence Jr. number one, Terrence Crawford number two, Jerron Ennis number three, Jordanis Ugas number four, Virgil Ortiz Jr. number five, Imantaya Stanionis number six, Keith Thurman at number seven. Now, Keith Thurman is one of those names. I believe Keith Thurman will only fight for a title. Keith Thurman wants the big dollars, so I don't think it's going to be Keith. That's a real, real dangerous fight for Keith. And Keith doesn't strike me at this point in his career as wanting to do any kind of fights to prove himself. If you're new to the boxing game, sit down, my young casual friend, because Keith Thurman at one time was the face of the welterweight division in all of boxing. He was the guy when PBC was showing free fights on Fox TV that was headlining big, big cards. So I don't see Keith Thurman in his view, would be stepping down, I think, to fight a guy like 
Jerron Boots Ennis. The two candidates I do have as far as Jerron Boots Ennis are Iman Tyus Stanionis. Such a fun guy to watch. Iman Tyus Stanionis from, I want to say he's Lithuanian. He had that awesome fight earlier this year against Ratsab Butayev. Fun fight. He got the attention of a lot of fans. Iman Tyus Stanionis strikes me as the type that is down to fight anybody because he is eager to prove himself. He's a foreigner, unlike Americans. They're a lot more, they're a lot less selective about who they fight. Foreigners, I've noticed, don't care. Ukrainians, Lithuanians, Europeans, the, the UK fighters, they just want to fight whoever, get their payday, and see, test the fates. Uh, USA boxers tend to not be so eager to test the fates, except for Devin the Dream Haney. He's willing to do it. So, Imantai Stanionis and a dark horse, potentially, Speedy Rashidi Ellis. That's the name I'm seeing a lot, you know, floating around the Twitter spaces. Speedy Rashidi Ellis is an undefeated fighter. Excellent hand speed. Great technical abilities. He was on Golden Boy for some time there, but got shelved and didn't fight for like two years. Just recently signed with the PBC. He just came back this last July after being on the shelf for the last two years. Got a quick TKO victory over a fighter whose name I do not recall. But stylistically, that would be a fun fight. So, we got Jerron Boots Ennis. He's going to be fighting in eight weeks. It looks like it might be on the same card as Javante Tank Davis. My two guesses on that are going to be Speedy Rashidi Ellis and Iman Tyus Stanionis Boxing Community. What do you think about Jerron Boots Ennis' return to the ring first or second week of January? Who do you think... His potential opponent is going to be if it's not Rashidi Ellis or Iman Tyus Dan Jonas. Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Let's chop this up. Hit that like button if you haven't already done so. I'm going to end the video there, y'all. This is Hot Boxing Minute, the future of boxing analysis on TikTok and YouTube. Peace.